Welcome folks. I want to explain why any permutation in the symmetric group Sn, namely all permutations on a set of numbers from one up to n, can be written as a product of two cycles. And let me clarify that this is a non-disjoint product so that the two cycles are going to have repeated elements in between them. Okay. So Let's do an example where we consider this permutation one, two, um, four, three, five. So I'm gonna draw this out. Ah, sorry, I should put these numbers in order. So the permutation one, two, four, three, five, it sends um, one to two. It sends two to four. It sends four to three. It sends three to five. And finally, it sends five all the way back to one. There it is, looks like a perfectly good permutation. Our task here is to write it as a product of two cycles, transpositions. And I'm gonna teach you a trick for doing this. When you wanna write a um, cycle, a single cycle, this is just one cycle. You know, if I had this on the end, that would be two cycles. But when I have just a single cycle, the way I write it as a product of transpositions will require one less transposition than the length of the cycle. So, so this is a five cycle. And so I'm gonna draw it as a product of four transpositions, it turns out. So I'm giving myself space to draw in four transpositions or two cycles. Transpositions are just another name for two cycles. Okay, so the element that appears first, we're gonna think of this as the loading element. Wherever, um, whoever's in, um, wh whoever's currently been mapped to one, well, at the beginning, at the beginning, we're gonna send one to where it ends up at the very end and and, and then it's never gonna move again. Other elements are gonna get moved onto the position of one and they're in the loading position that they're gonna be sent next to their final spot. Okay, that was a little cryptic, but let's just do it. I wanna send one to his final location. One's final location is two. So my first transposition is only gonna swap one and two. And really I care about this part. I wanna send one to two and then one is never gonna move again. Three, four, and five stay put. And that is a two cycle. That is a transposition. Okay, you'll notice now that one got sent to its final position, whereas two got sent to one. So two is now in this loading position. We're now gonna send two to its final resting place and it'll never move again. So I want two to go to four at the end of the day. So now I'm gonna swap one and four. So that at the end of the day, two will go from one to four and then never move again, it'll turn out. So that's our next transposition. We swap one and four. Okay, so first what we did is we swapped one and two. Next what we did is we swapped one and four. Who's currently in position one? Four just got mapped to position one. Do you see that? So now we're gonna send four to its final resting spot, which is three. So I'm gonna swap one and three. Keep everything else fixed. So that four will go to one, get swapped to three, and then stay put at the end until the end. Okay. And 
lastly, who's currently in this position one, uh, three has been mapped to one, but we want to send three to five. So we're going to swap one and five. Keep two and three and four put so that at the end of the day, three will go to one and then get mapped to its final spot at five. So we've, we've designed things so that one goes to two and then stays put just like we wanted. We've designed things so that two goes to one and then stays, then gets moved to four and stays put forevermore, just like we wanted. We've designed things so that after four gets mapped to one, gets mapped to three and then stays put forevermore. And we've designed things so that after three gets mapped to one, it gets mapped to um, five and then stays put forevermore, just like we wanted. We didn't really um, orchestrate things so that five would get mapped to one, but that ends up happening via this process as well. Five does get mapped to one as we like. So this is just showing how to take a, um, in this case, a five cycle and write it as a product of transpositions. You know, you might, you might get the pattern. If I had a seven cycle, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that is indeed seven letters. The pattern is first I would swap A and B, then I'd swap A and C, then I'd swap A and D, then A and um, E, and finally A and F, um, and then A and G. And that'll, that'll actually accomplish our goal of writing this seven cycle as a product of two cycles, transpositions. Okay, public questions? Thanks so much.